This tutorial is about debugging in MATLAB. Debugging is the process of finding why code is not working like it's supposed to. Some mistakes will cause the program to stop executing altogether, for example if you try to index an array beyond its length. Other mistakes will let the program run, but you will not get the results you expect. These types of errors are much harder to catch in general. Debugging is something that every programmer spends a lot of time on. In fact, when writing complicated code, the breakup can be 10% writing code and 90% debugging, or maybe even more like 5% and 95%. To help you out, MATLAB has some great debugging tools that make finding these mistakes easier. In this tutorial, we will explore how to use them. The main concept in debugging is that of a breakpoint. A breakpoint is something that pauses code execution at that location. In other words, if you want MATLAB to pause before executing a certain line of code, you will place a breakpoint there. This is done by clicking on the dashes next to the number line in MATLAB script or function. Here, I have a function that finds the local maxima and their indices in a vector. I can place a breakpoint on any line with a dash next to it, like this. I click on the dash, and a red circle appears. This means that the breakpoint is valid. If the file has not been saved or has changed since placing the breakpoint, the circle will be gray. Make sure to save your file before running the code. For example, if I change anything, the circle turns gray and I have to resave it in order to make the breakpoint valid again, like this. If I add an, another space here, take it away, well now the file is not saved, the breakpoint is gray. I save it and it turns red and is valid again. If I clear all the breakpoints by clicking on them again and run this function from the command line, I will get an error. So suppose that I make a vector A, which is going to be rand, 10 random values, and I run this function, let's say VL is equal to local max of A. I get an error. We can see that the error occurred on line 7, as it says it right there, and this is where debugging comes into play. Now I place a breakpoint in my function and try again, this time going through slowly to try to catch my mistake. When I call the function from the command window, execution pauses at the red circle. Notice, when we look at the workspace, all of the variables from the main workspace are gone, and only those that exist within the function are present. This should make sense, since the workspace of functions is isolated from other workspaces. If this concept is unfamiliar, please refer to the function tutorial. When we pause at the red circle, there is a green arrow pointing at the current line. This means that this line of code has not yet been executed. We know this because there is no variable called n in the workspace, which means it has not yet been declared. The only variable present so far is the variable v, which is the input to the function. To execute the next line of code, I press step. When I do this, we can see the green arrow has moved down one line and is now waiting to execute the next line. We can also see that n has now been declared as it is present in the workspace. We can keep pressing step over and over to run one line at a time. This is very useful as we can see the changes that take place immediately in the workspace. So I'll press it a few more times here. We see vels has now been declared, locs has been declared, we entered a for loop, ii is now declared and is equal to 1. Now, as we step through, we got to the line that caused the error. Before executing, we pause. Now we can type things in the command window to check results without crashing the program. If I copy and paste the logical expression into the command window, we can see that there is an error. Now we can break it down even further. Let's copy just the first part. Again, there is an error. 
Let's now copy individual terms. This is OK. And there it is. We look at the value of ii and realize that it is 1. Therefore, ii minus 1 is 0. And we cannot have 0 as an index to an array. That's why we have an error. We now change the code to start from 2 instead of 1, since we're looking back one term. And try to run it again without any breakpoints. First, we click Quit Debugging to exit the debugger. And then we change our code, I already did that, and save it. We remove the breakpoint by clicking on it. And let's run it. We again get the same error as before. So let's put a breakpoint at the line that caused the error. Now let's run the code and see what happens. So we stop here and if we check this expression, there is no error. This means that the error occurs on a further iteration. We can step through the function over and over until we find where the error occurs or we can hit continue over here and this will run until the next breakpoint. In this case, since we are in a loop, it will come back to the same spot with ii having incremented by 1. We can keep going in this fashion trying to spot an error. To speed things up though, let's exit debugging and add a little feedback. We can add a line that displays the current value of ii so that we know exactly when the error occurs. Let's put it right here. So now it'll display the value of ii every loop iteration. Now we can run the code without breakpoints and we again get an error. So we'll take away the breakpoint, save the code, run it. We again get the error just like before because we haven't actually changed anything except adding feedback. But now we can see that the last ii that was printed is 10. This means that the function had an error on the 10th and final iteration. We can again place a breakpoint at the line with the error. However, we don't want to click continue over and over, so instead we'll use a conditional breakpoint. To do this, we right click on the breakpoint and click set slash modify condition. Now we can tell the program to only stop at that breakpoint if a given condition is true. In this case, we'll set it to ii equals 10, since we know that's when the program broke. Now the breakpoint turns yellow, indicating that it is a conditional breakpoint. Now, when we run the code again, Execution pauses at that line, but we see in the workspace that ii equals 10 instead of 1 like before. Now we can test the expression in the command window. We get an error as expected. Again, we can narrow it down to a specific term, and in this case we find that the error occurs because of this term. We see that the problem is because we tried to use ii plus 1, but ii is already the length of the vector. Therefore, we can change the number of iterations of the loop to be 1 less. So we'll exit debugging, change this to go to n minus 1, take away the breakpoint, and we can run this code again. So we clear all the breakpoints, save it of course run the code again, and there are no errors. We find the local maxima and they're marked by the circles, just like we expected at the end with the plot command. So we're done. As you can see, it would have been very difficult to find the mistakes in this code without breakpoints. This is because the function workspace is isolated, so we cannot tell what went wrong just from the error message. In this case, you may have seen the mistake way before we found it through debugging 
but this will not be the case with more complicated code. Breakpoints allow you to step through your code line by line and to see exactly what is actually happening in your program. This is of course powerful for debugging, but can also be used to study code. For example, if you find some interesting code but are not sure how it's working, it's a good idea to step through it line by line and examine what is happening to each of the variables. Likewise, it's extremely useful when learning things like branches, loops, and functions, as once again, you can step through slowly and see exactly how the program executes.